Hello, I'm Avin Jogia. And I'm Erin Westbrook. Welcome to Real World. Filmmaker Alex Casimir is a passionate movie buff who is well on his way to achieving his dream of becoming a great director, but his quest for the happy ending might take some time. Here's Living in Cinema. Wait, what did I say? I asked, what are you doing, what I'm doing? I don't know what you are doing, but tell me what I'm doing. I'm making this video, so stay tuned, relax, and eat some popcorn. No, don't do that, please, don't. All right, shut the hell up. Let's go. My name is Alex Kazmier, and I want to be a director simply because I like making movies. Movies have always provided me with an escape. It's allowed me to act out different lives, different characters, visit new and exciting places. That's where my love stems from. Just being able to be something completely different. One Halloween I was Darth Vader and I would keep on reciting lines um, from Empire Strikes Back for I think a good whole week just to you know get in character. I learned a lot from movies. I learned how to speak from movies. He's looking at you kid. My mom uh, was a single mom and she worked most of the time so when I was younger, I understood that she didn't really have time to watch over me. One thing she would do to keep me occupied, at least for the moment being, was um, she would have this huge stack of VHS tapes, and one at a time she would pop one in. For the longest time, I felt as if movies were my only form of guidance. Christmas of 2011, my mom bought me a flip camera, and I would record everything. I would bring the flip camera with me to school, or to A26 and I would just film everyone there. I think at some point the camera almost became an extension of me. So I used the camera as much as I could, even for really pointless stuff. What we're doing, part of the challenge of making a movie is but that you walked you in and you had this like boundless energy and I think that really excited the staff and I, I mean, I, I know that you're being that excited and that enthusiastic kind of motivated us to build programming around that and figure out a way to capture that and um, push it to the extent that we could push it to. You played the like kind of beaten down, uh, emotionally traumatized detective very well. Hey, still, I got a case for you. I'm listening. There's a kid gone missing on Fifth Avenue. Are you sure this is the right case for me? If we're up to me, you wouldn't even be here. You'll be on traffic, dude. Then who's gonna do your dirty work? You made Detective Stiller... He had a lot going on inside. But he didn't... He, you know, he, he was, uh... He couldn't express it all the time. You sat down and you talked about that movie 500 Days of Summer for, like, at least 20 minutes. There are not a lot of 10-year-olds who would offer up a romantic comedy as an option. Um, and that, I think, was, was sort of like an early indication that you were thinking about film making in a different way and that you were maybe thinking about romance in a different way. <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle, 500 Days of Summer, and uh, When Harry Met Sally, a lot of Meg Ryan stuff. In the eighth grade, I had the biggest crush on this girl named Sophia Malmoli. I actually shot my very first movie with her in the lead role. Really, the only reason why I asked her to be a part of the movie was because I wanted a chance to talk to her. I try to use the logic of romantic comedies in order to, you know, get to know her. And I don't suggest any kid do that ever, or any adult, you know. 
back then it was hard and movies were a great way for me to at least get some idea of how a relationship was supposed to be. Did I ever tell you what I thought was going to happen after uh, we shot like the movie and everything? No. I honestly thought that after we shot the movie, you would become my girlfriend. Why did you think that? I thought that because I thought we actually had a connection, but really I don't... When? Know. When? Did you feel anything? I don't want to be like mean, that person who's like, no. But no, I... no, no, it can. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. But like, no. Take my hand. You? Complete me. You complete me. <laughs> I hate that. That's Anna. She's smart, beautiful, and she has great tasty music. It's really just anything I could ask for. I didn't really talk to her much, she didn't really talk to me, but I felt like we knew each other. You seem like the girl that would appear in like a romantic comedy. Yeah? Yeah. People you, tell me that a lot. You fit like in a, you fit, yeah, because I think it's true. Yeah, people you fit say like, that. I didn't feel like you have that like almost girl next door-esque like personality. <laughs> That's lame, I don't want to be that. So there's this thing in Anna Karenina where somebody's talking about the difference between an artist and a dilettante. And he says the dilettante draws his inspiration from other art, and the artist draws his inspiration from life. It's better to have your relationship with the world inform what you make than to have your relationship with other movies or other pieces of art. So I just imagine, like, you know, kind of a relationship being very, very, very perfect. Being very, well, very yeah, a relationship scenic, like cinematic. Should be perfect. Should it? I yeah. mean, should it? It should be perfect. I mean, like, there should be, I mean, there shouldn't be problems, but, like, there will be problems, but, like, if it's perfect, then it'll be resolved. Or, or at least someone will learn to cope with it the right way. Do you think that defines a perfect relationship? I don't know what defines a perfect relationship, because I, like, haven't had enough that I would know that. I think some people think I'm a weird guy, and I probably am. I think my obsession with movies can sometimes be a bit unhealthy. Movies have become such a big part of who I am. It's been hard trying to accept that my life can't be something grander. It can't be an epic space odyssey. It can't be a groundbreaking thriller. It can't be a hero's quest. It can't be a romantic love story. Sorry. I said I love the Smiths. My life is sad, awkward, charming, and kind of pathetic. But that's what I am, and that's what I'm going to be. Well, that's it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. See you next time on RealWorks.